Hey, thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 287. Today, we're talking about the upcoming generation of martial artists and how the martial arts may change with them, quote unquote, in charge. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and I'm the lucky guy who gets to talk about martial arts as part of his job. I get to email and social media with so many of you, and it's actually from an email that we got today's topic. You can check out the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can check out our products at whistlekick.com or on Amazon. And you can feel free to get a hold of us. We are at Whistlekick. I am Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And you can comment on the episode on the show notes page. There's a lot of ways to interact with us. We're trying to make it easy. We want to hear from you. We're working to build something with you as part of it. It's a lot stronger when we're all involved. Now, this question comes in from a longtime listener and probably the most frequent commenter. Get a lot of emails from this individual, questions, comments, and quite often I'll just write back directly. But this question seemed powerful enough that I thought I would turn my answer into an episode. They've asked that they stay anonymous. And in fact, I'm going to paraphrase some of what they've written just because it, it'll make this flow a little bit better for, for my voice. So when you and your colleagues are shooting the breeze about the generation coming up behind, do you, do they see things positively? It's a great question. He goes on to talk about previous episode, about participation awards, and questioning, are we creating a generation of soft people and how is that going to impact the martial arts goes on to ask where do you see martial arts going in five years will ego still get in the way it's a great question and there are a lot of elements to that there first off let's talk about the generational stuff how martial arts has changed as we look at different eras when we talk about the martial arts in the 50s and the 60s we're talking about the blood and guts era. We've heard that term on this show. It's thrown around in a lot of writing, old movies. And if you watch competition, if you watch the way people train, or if you talk to people that started in that time, you know why. Martial arts was rough. It was rugged. There were no kids' classes. If you couldn't hang, you didn't go back to class. There was no accommodation for someone who didn't want to get banged up. Broken bones were common. It was part of the ethos of the martial arts then. But obviously, that needed to change if martial arts was going to become anything more than a fringe activity. So we look through the 70s, the 80s, as that next generation became the instructors of the martial arts schools, they made it a bit more approachable. They softened a bit. Children's classes started... And we start to see martial arts become a lot more approachable. It's something that nearly everyone can do. And when we look at martial arts over the 90s, the, the 2000s, the 20 teens, we see that martial arts is becoming even more approachable. There are martial arts classes for every demographic, for older people, for younger people, for people with special needs. Martial arts has become something that everyone can do. And I absolutely love that. At the same time, we've had a lot of cultural changes. Now, I can't speak to the way things are going internationally. I'm an American. I grew up here in America. And while I've traveled internationally, I'm not going to pretend to understand what the culture of other countries is like and how it's changed. But I know that here in America, we have become, I guess I will use the word that no, it wasn't in this gentleman's email, but it was the word I, I believe I paraphrased at the beginning about softer. No, it is in there. <laughs> People are becoming softer. We've removed a lot of the challenge from life. Without challenge, without the need to overcome struggle, obstacles, life starts to become a little less meaningful. That's one of my arguments against participation awards. That's one of the things that I see wrong with the way that we conduct so many things in society today. We want everything to be 
easy and simple and perfect. And it, all the while we're doing that, we're having the opposite outcome. People are creating challenge in their lives because we need it. We need that struggle. This is why things like obstacle course racing, Spartans, etc., have become more popular. This is why you see people that are stepping into rings and cages and f- having full contact fights because the rest of their life is simple and easy. Now, I'm not saying that's everyone's reasoning, but if we look back 20 years ago, very few people wanted to participate in full contact fights. Life was a lot more of a fight. As human beings, we tend to value the things that we've worked for the most. It's a lesson that any parent with a small child has probably seen. You give your kid an allowance, maybe you're making them work for that allowance, and then they save up, they buy something, and they are so proud of that thing that they've worked for. The value has something tangible to it now, rather than giving to to them as a gift. So if we look at that path, that personal growth, or unfortunately, lack thereof, my fear is that we're going to see fewer people that want to tackle martial arts as school owners, as instructors. Now, I actually predict, I guess, that after that dip, we will see a massive increase. Because when we look at society, we look at anything that we do, the pendulum swings. And it is swinging. I feel we are nearing the edge of the softer side. I think we're finally starting to grasp that people need to have some difficulty in their lives. So as we reach that edge, we're going to come back. Of course, there is a a gap in any action versus the in the outcome on people. Excuse me, we could, you know, suddenly start making everyone live on cheese and we're not going to see the full ramifications of that for an entire generation. A generation's about 20 years. I would say that in the next 10 to 15 years, we're probably going to see martial arts participation rise, but the number of instructors are going to shrink. I don't know what that's going to look like. I haven't really thought about it that deeply. Most of what I'm talking about now is off the cuff. But I do believe that martial arts, traditional martial arts, is one of the places that people are going to look to for growth and development as we become more conscious as a society of the lack of challenge, the lack of tempering that life gives us. As we realize that we need to be conditioned to grow as human beings, Martial arts is one of the places I believe people will look to for that. If I look a little bit shorter, five years, where do I see martial arts? We do seem to be on a bit of an upswing, and there are a lot of reasons that that could be. There could be some attention paid to traditional martial arts because of mixed martial arts. Population's growing, and so we're recruiting more people because of that. And I think also because there are more business systems in place for martial arts schools, there are more options for people to step in, do the thing that they love as their profession, and make a living at it. When I was a kid, it it almost seemed like a bad thing if someone said that they were a martial arts instructor as their job. There There was almost this guilt to say that they made a living doing that. Most martial arts school owners did other things to make money, at least growing up in Maine. I I was a kid. I didn't get around much. I don't know what was going on in California, but I know that in Maine, just my quiet observations as as a child were that people weren't out there raking it in. Society has shifted. It's okay to make money doing the things that you love. I think most of us in the martial arts have accepted, though certainly not all, based on the comments I read, most of us has, have accepted that it is okay to make a living sharing the knowledge that you have as a martial artist. And with individuals out there like Professor B- Brandon Beliso and Kyoshi Dave Kovar, both of whom have been on the show, they have made a name for themselves by 
helping others see success in their martial arts school by bringing in, retaining more students, making more money. You know, these are all good things. A martial arts school that doesn't stick around doesn't help anybody. So where are we going? I believe we're going up, but it's not going to be a steady upward swing. We are going to have some dips and some bobbles. But I think if we look out 20, 30, 40 years, I think traditional martial arts is really strong. And I hope I'm around to see it. I plan to be. What do you think? What do you think about the way the generational differences are going to impact martial arts and how it's taught? Who's teaching it? How many people are around to teach it? I want to hear your feedback. If you're comfortable, please post it over at the show notes. This is episode 287. If you're not comfortable posting publicly, just shoot me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. The more I hear from you, the more I better know how to serve all of you. That's really what it's all about. I appreciate you giving me that opportunity. Thanks for listening. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.